our residents are going to see impacts day one and then in, at the end of year five. And we'll be again updating and evolving along the way. In a city in crisis, Mayor Brandon Scott's promising to dramatically reduce violent crime in Baltimore. Now the mayor unveiling what he calls a first of its kind crime plan. The goal is to reduce gun violence by 15% every year for the next five years. This morning, Maxine Stryker is crunching the numbers and discovering just how ambitious this goal really is. For the seventh consecutive year, Baltimore City is on track to see more than 300 homicides. I will aim to reduce homicides by 15% each year in my term, getting us below 300 homicides in my first year. That was Mayor Brandon Scott on the campaign trail in January of 2020. Yesterday, it was deja vu as Scott unveiled his new crime plan after seven months on the job. What we are striving for in the successful implementation of this plan is a reduction of violent crime by 15 percent, in addition to making Baltimore City uh, a city where everyone feels safe. The five-year plan aims to reduce gun violence by 15 percent each year. But what exactly does that look like and where does that leave us by the year 2026? Basing the numbers off of last year's homicide rate of 335, a 15 percent reduction this year would put the city at 285 homicides, unlikely at the current pace. By 2022, there'd be 243 homicides. By 2024, 176. And by 2026, a 15% reduction would put the city at 128 homicides. The last time the homicide rate even fell below 200 was in 2011. Before that, it wasn't until the 1970s. The last time on record the city saw a single year decrease in homicides of 15% or more was in 2008, when Sheila Dixon was mayor. Let's just make sure we remember the yardsticks he put in place to evaluate whether this plan is working. Former federal prosecutor and mayoral candidate Thiru Vignaraja says it's an ambitious goal. This new plan sounds an awful lot like the old plan. The same sound bites, going after violent repeat offenders, <laughs> collaboration to go after gangs. Even the new things are, seem quite disconnected from the fight against violent crime. The holistic plan is set to take place over five years. I mean, five years is a pretty long time for the murders to be happening every single day. We asked why the city should have to wait when they've already been looking for results for far too long. This plan is a continuous thing, uh, that implementation, and they will see results every year along the way. But what we won't do is do what we did in the past and think that we're gonna just go year to year, year to year, year to year. Our residents are gonna see impacts day one and then in, at the end of year five. In Baltimore, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. Now, earlier this morning, former federal prosecutor and mayoral candidate Thruvin Raja joined us live with his takeaways from this plan. I think the challenge here is there's a lot of catchwords and buzz phrases that we've heard before from this mayor, uh, as well as frankly from a lot of politicians, going after violent repeat offenders, collaboration, accountability. It, the, the devil's in the detail and the proof is in the pudding. We have to see these strategies actually be delivered on the streets. And until we see that, we're just going to think this is another press conference. Well, Theroux went on to say that there are a couple positives of the plan, including collaboration with federal authorities, and that it sets those clear goals. On the same day of the mayor's crime announcement, one man was gunned down in East Baltimore, and then hours later, a 19-year-old was also shot and injured in East Baltimore. So far this year, 193 people have been killed in the city. That's nine more than the same time last year. And shootings are also up. 385 people have been shot and survived. With a week left in July, the city's now just shy of 200 murders. We've not seen this level of violence in Baltimore since 2017. Fox 45 is committed to covering stories that affect you. And this coming Tuesday, the mayor's new crime plan will be one of the topics at our Fox 45 town hall. It will be at Our Lady of Good Counsel Church that's in Locust Point. We're going to stream the town hall live on foxbaltimore.com and on our Facebook page from 7 to 8 o'clock that night. Baltimore has seen violence take over the streets year after year. More than 300 homicides, six years in a row, and 2021 is on pace to be no different. All right, guys. But now the mayor is looking to make today different. What we also know that Baltimore hasn't done a great job of is 
building out ways to hold themselves accountable in tracking data. The five-year approach has several different pieces. Mayor Scott, should the city residents be expected to wait five years while this plan is implemented? Well, again, we said earlier today that this plan is a continuous thing, uh, that implementation and they will see results every year along the way. But what we won't do is do what we did in the past and think that we're gonna just go year to year, year to year, year to year. Our residents are gonna see impacts day one and then in, at the end of year five. The mayor's plan includes expanding community intervention programs using federal money right now from the American Rescue Plan to fund it. And they do work if you fund them on a sustained basis. We try to get answers about that sustained funding. Part of this money is coming from the American Rescue Plan. That's a one-time infusion of dollars. Where do you see the money coming from after those dollars are already spent? Well, as I said this morning, this is also about our continued effort to reimagine how the city budgets, right? This is why we're looking at not just that, those money that we got from ARP. You heard also about the federal government's willingness. You heard the president of these United States say that this country under his leadership will now start to focus on uh, gun violence. A priority for programs over time while people are dying right now on the streets of Baltimore. Now, after a news conference with the mayor this afternoon, I spoke with a community activist who says he's less interested in these long term approaches to solving the crime problem and he more more interested in what's happening right now to save lives. So it's clear that the mayor still has some work to do to get some more community buy in for this plan that he's talking about will be in place for the next five years. Of this crime plan comes after the city submitted a formal request for more federal help in Baltimore's fight against crime. Alexa Ashwell continues our team coverage live outside police headquarters where she examines if this marks the end of what some have considered a defund the police movement. Alexa. Yes, the mayor's crime plan does not include more Baltimore police officers, but today he did tell me he supports more federal help. This as the city continues to struggle with resources. Crime tape, shell casings, and a victim. The scene all too common here in Baltimore. The relentless violence prompting the city solicitor to request more federal officers. Or do you support that, and how does it fit into your crime plan? Well, again, we, we know, Alexa, that any request like that has to originate with me. The mayor speaking to federal partnerships already in place, including with the ATF and its role in helping get guns off city streets. So, yes, I support it. We have a great partnership with our federal law enforcement partners, and we're looking forward to uh, having that grow. Growing police partnerships and resources in the fight against gun violence. It's an action we're seeing from leaders across the country, from New York to D.C. and farther south in Atlanta. Most of us have never said we should be defunding uh, the police. Um, what we want is the police to be able to use their resources to go after violent criminals. Earlier in the year, the mayor vowed to form a task force charged with reducing the Baltimore Police Department's budget over a five-year period, with those funds then reallocated to other city agencies in the fight against crime. This is about reimagining public safety. Weeks later, the mayor's proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year did not include a reduction in the force's budget. And when he got the job and he saw what the serious problem was, there's no way to find it. Finding the formula to stop the surge in violent crime. Now, this request for more federal officers comes as the city continues to deal with a shortage in Baltimore police officers. Just how short the department is at five, I question the commissioner. Reporting live outside police headquarters, Alexa Ashwell, Fox 45 News.